Obsidian Flames has been out for two weeks now, so I want to take a look at, at the top 10 best decks in standard format. But this will not be your, your conventional top 10. I'm going to be basing it off of play limitless TCG win rate. I'll be throwing out all decks that have less than, than 10 total usage, just so we don't have like completely jank meme decks, maybe with 3 and 2 in, in a tournament, and have an insanely high win rate. There's one thing to remember on a top 10 list like this. This is not necessarily my firm opinion of, of, of like the firm order of top 10 best decks in format. This is just to give you an, an idea of what decks are performing best online right now. At number 10, we have Colorless Lugia V Star coming in at a win rate of 48.77%. And actually, the top list on Linux right now happens to be my own list that I went 6 0 at one of the Sunny Games tournaments with. So, why I like Colorless Lugia right now is Snorlax is just such a huge threat for Giratina decks. And we'll definitely uh, take a look at Giratina later in, in this video. And just most lost in decks, a lot of decks in general cannot deal with Snorlax very efficiently. You also have a, a high damage attacker like Weirdeer. You can hit for, for good weaknesses with, with Drape Beyond and Luxray. I also feel like you're more consistent. Consistent than, than the single strike build, and I, I do think the, the single strike build is still strong right now. I think Colossus Lugia Lug Lug Beastar is pretty well positioned right now and has a pretty solid match spread against pretty much every single deck in format. Uh, one thing to note is, is I have uh, cut the Charon's Care from this list and uh, turned it into a collapsed stadium. Uh, but overall, Colossus Lugia is my favorite deck right now. I've been playing it tons uh, live on the channel lately, and I'm trying my best to get this win rate up and higher on, on this list. Number 9 on our list is going to be Palky V Star Chin Pao with a win rate at 49.35%. And this deck is pretty much copy pasted from last format. If you look at the top list here, not a whole lot of change from some lists we've seen do well in the past. This deck is pretty awesome because you have Palki as an early game attacker, a uh, Chin Pao as like a big one shot option. You usually can't use it too many times per game, but it's great synergy with like Star Portal and piles up energies in play and take big knockouts on B Max and B Stars. I love the include of Starmie right now with all the different RCS decks running around right now, or even Charizard, just decks that flood energy all across their board. You can punish them pretty hard with Starmie and Raiding Greninja, Cologne, and Cross Witchers are still just excellent for bench control as long as there's evolving decks in format that that combo is going to be pr pretty good. What's, what's kind of funny is if you were to do like a regular classic top 10, this deck would probably be in just about this exact same spot. I think this is a, a pretty easy deck to pick up and, and play. It's not terribly hard and also an incredibly powerful one right now in the current format. At number 8, we have Lugia again, but this time the single strike build. Single strike Lugia has been doing quite well right now, or at least both builds of Lugia have been doing quite well well right now because Duraludon V Max is totally extinct in the current metagame. So you'll see that, that this list that, that, that Benny Billinger nearly took down a late end series of event with is playing no sort of Urshifu, zero respect to Duraludon whatsoever. Tyranitar is still an incredibly powerful attacker because he can deal pretty well with those single price decks with like one shotting their Pokemon and, and milling them out. Also can, can one shot Pokemon V stars and get pretty close to Pokemon V Max and EXs. Uh, we, well, we do have the K Kabalion, like previously a pretty useless card, but when we bench that K Kabalion, it gives a like 30 damage buff to our Tyranitar hitting into a dark type Pokemon. So with three single strike energies and one Cabalion, our Tyranitar V can actually one shot a Charizard EX. Other than that, you're totally your, your classic single strike Lugia deck, really nothing too crazy about it. I guess we have the one Stone Journer and one Yveltal as single prize attackers. So overall, both Lugia decks are doing very well right now, but the single strike build is doing just a little bit better right now. At number seven, we, we have a Lost Zone Box with a win rate just over 50%. Lost Zone Box, I definitely could feel like it's win rate like sort of artificially dragged down because people really like to mess around with all sorts of different crazy stuff that maybe isn't necessarily super good. This particular list we'll be highlighting today is one that the Taxi Cab is used to take down a recent late night series event. And it's actually a Kyogre build, which is very interesting because Kyogre was really on the decline going into the Palde Evolve meta. But th this build is very interesting because we see no Raikou in here. The only other V aside from Dragonite is Pidgeot. And one of the reasons I think Kyogre might be succeeding the most in for, for a Lost Zone build is that all the different RCS decks are performing very well right now. It's hard for a regular turbo build to take six, six prizes through all of those chunky Pokemon. Or Kyogre could just have that big play with especially along with Echoing Horn where it could take four prizes all in one attack. Pidgeot is sort of unique because it's like a V Pokemon that can proc for a Seal Stone, but you can just chuck it back into the deck with the Vanishing Wings ability and not have that, that 2 prize liability in play. The, the the Double Rock Sand is also pretty cool. You don't usually see Turbo List playing uh, Double Rock Sand. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool list. It's one that I'm going to have to experiment, maybe even bring it to the, the, the channel. But um, overall, Lost in Box, it's been a staple in the meta for a while and still doing well after Obsidian Flames. 
At number six, we've already seen Scooter just barely edging out Lost Zone Box with a win rate of 50.68. And RC Scooter was once a mainstay in, in the current st standard metagame. It still does not have a very high usage rate, just barely sneaks above the uh, needed 10 cr criteria to make it onto today's list. But it actually has a pretty interesting matchup spread. Here's a list up here like Gudra is very good into the decks that are not hitting a 270 plus damage. Like if, if it can sit there and tank stuff and be two shotting, it is very good. And then, but like, it's like against Charizard, a deck that only can hit 180 damage, what is it going to do ab ab about a Gudra? So like you're trying to cover your holes like where Gudra does not work, you're we're playing Alolan Vulpix to try to be able to cover those matchups. Also you are just playing Pidgeot because why not, the card is broken. And there's like a lot of crazy cards in here that like I guess put, putting Ponjo on events Arceus can, can help you establish that, that Vulpix a lot quicker. I don't feel like this like, I don't really understand what Arvin's trying to do here. I really am not super sold on Pidgeot. I feel like if you're playing Radiant Greninja, Poppy could be kind of insane in a deck like this. Uh, but that is very cool. I said another one I'd like to, to, to try out here on the channel. I'm sure as it gets played more, the winner will probably dip a little bit more. But like, it's pretty cool to see someone I I innovating and doing so well with RC Scudra in the current meta. At number five, we've Arctina with a win rate at 53.49. And I already covered this deck on my channel. And in fact, the result, uh, the highest result on Limitless is still that exact same list that I used in my video. So I'm not really going to go too in depth to this one. Arctina is just performing very well right now because with so many uh, abilities, Judge, Path, the Peak, Iona are just very powerful supports to be playing right now. And actually you can easily tech in a Grass Attacker to capitalize on all those Charizard decks. Will the Superior stay in the, the list as Charizard's usage rate starts to decline? I don't know, but I feel like that this deck has a, a lot going for it right now, being able to one-shot Beastars, Hand Disruption, and hit the, the most popular deck for weakness. So I think that Arctina is one of the, the strongest decks in the format, and also it has one of the highest win rates right now. At number four, we have Lost Tina with a win rate at 53.63%. And if you ask most people right now, what is BDAF? They will tell you Lost Tina. And this is the list that took down a, a, a late night event, pretty much copy pasted from last format. Um, I'm like still, I hate how inconsistent the deck is. I don't really know how it can be quote unquote BDAF if it's a inconsistent pile. Like, I would honestly like there to be a third super rod in here. I think that Iono is not a very good card in this deck. I love fourth Nest Ball. Um, I've made my thoughts known on Garatina in several videos and several streams in, in, in the past. People, people are doing very well with it. Honestly, it would not surprise me though if something crazy pops up at, at, at Pittsburgh and Garatina sort of has a lackluster performance. With all that being said, it's still one of the strongest picks in standard format right now. At number three, we have Urshifu with the win rate at 53.59. Once the NIC champion, it really hasn't done a whole lot since. It has pretty much fallen out of favor with a lot of players. But I feel like the deck is actually very strongly positioned right now with all the Lost Zone stuff. Guardi and Charizard are running around. Like it's, it's really never been better to have like a very strong bench control. And Urshifu is pretty much the strongest bench control deck in format. And the weakest matchup it was Mew, especially if you're not playing Spirit Tomb. And Charizard has chased Mew out of the format pretty much. We, we do see that, the, that this list that performed well is playing a Spirit Tomb. Other than that, I think this is pretty much what we've, we've come to know and love with Urshifu. I definitely have a recurring theme in today's video. Lots of pretty similar lists, very re refined lists from last format. Not too much to add to it. I feel like Urshifu is a sleeper pick for Pittsburgh Regionals, and I feel like it's going to have a pretty solid showing at the event. At number two, we have Double Turbo Mew. And this is, yes, not Fusion Mew. Double Turbo Mew actually has a higher win rate than Fusion Mew at 54.41%. The reason for that is the, the new Charizard EX has made life very difficult for Fusion Mew decks. So we see that this Double Turbo Mew list is incorporating the Slowgore from Fusion Strike as a way to hit for Grass Weakness and be able to one-shot that Charizard. You have to spend two tablets in order to get that one-shot, so I have seen lists using Super Active Glasses. I think Justified Gloves could be another solid card to be able to buff up with that damage and conserve your, your power tablets. I'm still not 100% sure that this is like actually fixes your Charizard problem, and that like Del Fox can like knock out your Shelmet in, in, in the early turns, or your Shelmet can just get lost up and knocked out. But it's, it's an interesting way that this Double Turbo Mew deck has gone, and it's definitely uh, proving to be pretty successful with a very high win rate group right now. And at number one, we've Mariah on EX with a win rate of 56%, way above second place, and it's kind of surprising to me because I would not ever consider Mariah on even close to being the best second format right now. But that's what the numbers say currently. This list is very similar to what Andrew Mahone uh, got top 32 at the World Championships with, 
I guess with, with Morale, you're trying to be super fast, super aggressive, uh, take er, er, early knockouts early as turn one, play Path to the Peak and Judge and try to slow your opponent down. Because the issue with Morale is if, if your opponent can withstand that early aggression, it can be hard to close out games. So you're trying to have like Path and Iona to like, further that lead in, in the early turns level, your opponent can, can never get back into the game. I think it'd be interesting to play one of the new Maridons instead of Zerai Aura. I know Zerai Aura is a single prizer, but one of the new Maridons also has free retreat and actually has a more relevant at attack. Um, like, honestly, I'm very surprised to see Maridon th this high up. I don't think it's really that good um, at, 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 as a deck overall. I'm um, like, I think the one hour bin is super cringe. Like, you're never actually going to find it when you need it without Lumania or anything like that. But uh, th that's where it is. Maridon is number one right now. Very shocking, in my opinion. But that's where everything is. So, uh, what do you guys think of this top 10 list? Anything that, that you think is like way too high and is going to, to go down or anything that you think is too low that, that's going to come up? Thank you for watching all the way through the end of this video. Me rambling about all these Obsidian Flames deck. I appreciate you guys so much. If you like this kind of content, uh, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel because we're so close to 1,000 subscribers. We might have already got there um, if you're watching this video later, but um, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.